Good morning and welcome back to our Pacific Morning Show. Thank you so much for tuning in on this beautiful Monday. We hope you are having um, a safe drive to work, if you're going to work or to school or to university, wherever that may be. On today's show, we have a representative from the Labour Party, Dr. Anai Nehru Lea Vasa, who is a MP and also a GP. He's been practicing medicine for 15 years. Um, he is running for the Takanini electorate and he started his political political career in 2020 when he joined parliament during our COVID lockdown, was it? Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. How was that? <laughs> that was an experience. <laughs> <laughs> it's new times now and honestly, sometimes me and my team do wish we had, we, um, we went into another lockdown just for another week off. <laughs> yeah. How has your week been? Uh, first and foremost, you know, I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much for have, having me. You know, it's great to be here, an opportunity to speak to our youth and, um, and yeah, just share about politics. But my week has been okay. It's been, you know, the last two weeks of campaigning, so everything's just ramped up a little bit. But yes. um, I'm looking forward to Saturday, 14th of October, because I'm going to have a good rest after that. That's good. <laughs> so voting opened yesterday. Yes. It has been very intense. I've seen billboards go up. I've seen billboards come down. It's pretty <laughs> down, clinic. down. I've, yeah. you up at the end. Yeah. I've seen people tagging all over it, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, yeah. it's that time of time of year again. Yeah. Everything is amping up, even in the media. Yeah. Racism is amping up, like yeah. the stories about racism, yeah. um, what different MPs have been facing during yeah. this um, election yeah. season. Can I ask you a question? What is yeah. the craziest thing that's happened? this election season for you personally? For me personally, yeah. um, I, guess, uh, the, I guess it's part of that whole race baiting, race sort of issues. Um, people feel much more emboldened to come up to you and just say these sort of uh, racial remarks. Mm. They, they think it's, I don't know, casual racism, they would say, but uh, racism, you know, it is, uh, you know, we just call it out. Um, mm -hmm. So th those are the things when we're out on the beats, when we're out, um, you know, sign waving and so forth. We just have hear more of that sort of stuff. That's Go back so home crazy. And so forth. Yeah, so. yeah, because there was a study that was conducted in America. This is mm. America, not relative oh, yeah, to New Zealand. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> during election season, there's always something racial. Well, America's filled with racism, but mm. something radical always happens whether it be from their left leaning side or their right leaning mm -hmm. side mm -hmm. and it always spikes during mm -hmm. election season yeah. and i'm yeah. starting to see it here in new zealand like recently we heard about um hannah her house got oh yes um, yeah it got invaded it got yeah invaded and then um yeah so and she's like what 21 what a I way know. to I, I don't know how old she is but what a way to enter <laughs> politics as a as yeah. a youth yeah. yeah so um it's very sad to hear that and it's sad to mm. see because it, it puts off other people from, you know, coming into politics who feel like, oh, no, it's not for me. Mm. But we, we want a society that's tolerant of each other's ideas, that we can, you know, still be respectful and disagree on things. Absolutely. But seeing this sort of stuff happening, it, it just puts our youth off from politics altogether. So it's yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And how has the response been from your electorate? My electorate's been good. Um, you know, uh, we have a diverse electorate. You know, everyone says that, but we, we, I truly do. Um, you know, I, I grew up in Mangere, or we started off in central Auckland, you know, with the migration of Pacific, Grey Lynn, went to Efakasa there, migrated to uh, Mangere in South Auckland, grew up there. So a lot of our Pacifica See, families, you know. All the best people are from yeah. Mangere. <laughs> Mangere to I tell you. <laughs> 60s or 80s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I tell everyone this, Mangere produces the greatest uh, Pacific <laughs> Islanders. Our whole team is from Mangere. Oh, really? Oh, too soon. Far, um, too soon far. Our producers, so yeah. am I, born and raised in Mangere. Yeah. Anyway, sorry about yeah. that. Yeah, so so I, I grew up in Mangere, but I started doing my doctoring um, in Mangere, Manurewa, Takanini. Um, so went around the place and then... Um, then got selected as a, a candidate and then, you know, blessed to uh, become the local MP for, for Takanini. But the electorate itself, 42% are Asian, you mm. know, coming from Mangere, mostly Pacific. So 42% Asian, then you've got 32% um, European, and then Pacific is the third largest, um, and then Maori fourth. So I've had to, I guess it's, it's been more of a learning for me in terms of other cultures. I've been at the Sikh temple quite a lot, so a lot of our Indian community there, our Chinese community. So it's been great mm. learning about other people's religion, cultures, and so forth. So it's been a blessed journey for me in Takana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. That's, that's really good to hear. Yeah. Um, that that would be a bit of a change mm. going from like predominantly Pacific and then 
mm. going into a electorate where it's um, quite diverse and mm. having to deal with different cultures and nationalities. Yeah. But um, thank you so much for coming onto our show this morning. We nice. really, really appreciate it. We're going to get straight into it um, yeah. with some of the questions that people are curious about. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen a lot of talk with the debates mm. um, that we're seeing on TV uh, about New Zealand's health system. Mm. They're mm. using too much money. Uh, the outcomes aren't um, leveling up to the money that we're using. Mm. Um, there's a lot of criticism around um, even how nurses and doctors are leaving mm. um, New Zealand because there's not enough a fair pay. Mm. Um, there's a lot of things that's been going on within the system mm. that a lot of people are happy about. In your opinion, is New Zealand's health system failing under a Labour-led government? Mm. I would say, as a doctor that's worked in the system for 15 years and beforehand was a professional patient having gone through cancer and so mm. forth, I see that the overall health system has a lot of challenges. I wouldn't say it's um, overall failing. I, I would say the challenges. You know, being working as a GP in South Auckland for many years, um, I think the what the health system has tried to do is give a one size fits all, mm. and that's been de detriment to our Maori and Pacific and vulnerable communities. And I was so pleased that when we came in, that we started to. Oh, I came in in 2020, but the Labor government came in in 2017. They started to invest more into health. So mm. since then, there's been 51% more funding within Pharmac itself to. Let's get those medicines there to treat our uh, diabetics, our cancer uh, patients. But then not only that, 45% um, overall uh, increase in, in the health budget uh, to go across um, all the programs. Um, so um, not only that, we, we, we talk about the mental health budget as well. Yes, $1.9 billion within, uh, from 2019. Mm. It's kind of been trying to rebuild that system as well, the mental health system. Um, so... The health reforms came in. It only came in last year in July. Um, I'm so optimistic about it. I think there still needs to be better investment into um, the Tak Fai order, Te Fatu order. Yes, uh, that's what we're pledging to do. Um, but, you know, it's only been one year anniversary to the new health system. Right. The new health system. So to say then, oh, it's not working, it's only one year old. Exactly. You know, there, there's still work to be done. And this is the first time for Pacifica that we've got our... Um, Pacific Health Strategy that's legislated within the Pai Ora health reform legislation to make sure that the government or any government that comes in has to prioritise Pacific Health, has to prioritise Māori Health. Mm. You know, now that we have uh, um, this uh, entity of Te Whai Ora to prioritise Māori Health, to do it by, for Māori, by Māori, mm. the, you know, that sort of approach that's much more um, emphasized in the new system. I think that's a good approach to, to have. I've worked in the health system, again, like I said, 15 years. Um, it's been knocking my head against the wall in terms of trying to make sure that um, the, the money goes where it needs to go. Um, and, you know, that had its own challenges. Pacific providers, Māori providers uh, were saying we need to change the whole system. The 20 DHBs are all doing different things, mm, you know. Mm. So I, I think, you know, this new health reform, the new health system, needs to give time for it to actually work and for it to produce the outcomes that we need. Yeah, absolutely, especially around, um, I think a political talking point that's been very common this year is this egalitarian, um, you know, New Zealand that mm. doesn't exist. <laughs> mm, mm. And this whole one-size-fits-all mm. approach. Um, it sounds good, you know, when it's coming from a politician, but when you look into the reality of it, like you just said, there mm. are different demographics with different needs and mm. we need to give time to make mm. sure that those needs are supported mm. and it's going to take resources mm. um, a lot of resources and mm. investing into those communities that need that help as well yeah. um, so you know with what you guys have implemented now as a labor government do you mm. think New Zealand's health system has improved during that mm. time if we, if we just look let, let, let's say for a few stats like um, immunization is one of those things that we for us providers, we still got to make sure we're pushing. Um, when I look at the stats from in the March quarter, we've we've seen an increase in Pacific immunization rates. Um, when we look at the daily smoking rates, yes, mm. that's improved. Uh, rheumatic fever is one of those things where it's it's an issue of poverty or overcrowding within our homes because of sore throats. You spread it around to the family mm. members. 
and then you start getting um, you know issues with the heart um, so uh, we've seen uh, rheumatic fever come down in the last couple of years but it's something that with all, you know, when I say immunization rates uh, rheumatic fever daily smoking rates and so forth those are things that we still need to be combating and make sure that we're not you know um, taking the foot off the pedal so mm -hmm. so I think there's there's parts of um, Pacific health that we are improving mm -hmm. there are parts where we still need um, you know, mm. to make sure that the system is working, where we are listening to the Pacific providers, Maori providers, mm. to make sure that what they're saying, we need to provide mm. and go directly to them instead of going through um, uh, uh, a middle organization who holds all the money, which yes. I, I won't say which, which organizations, <laughs> but <Do it. laughs> <laughs> they hold all the money and then they get filtered. But we want to go straight to those providers who say, we need this. Let's go to them. Yeah, that's awesome. And I'm glad that you guys are engaging with the people who are doing the mahi on the ground yeah. because that's very important. And I know a lot of people have different opinions on mm. consultation, who you should be consulting, but mm. that should be one of the top priorities um, when coming up with policies or yeah. allocating resources is consulting with the right um, people. Yeah. Um, Pacific Health, um, our people are constantly having... Um, our statistics needs improvement mm. with our health. Mm. Is it because we're lazy? Is it a matter of personal responsibility? Mm. Is it our culture? Or is it a result of a failing health system? If you had to give one answer, this may be an unfair <laughs> question. <laughs> unfair question. <laughs> As to the main contributor to poor Pacific health, mm -hmm. why do you think that is? Oh, I, I wouldn't say it's, a, it's just as simple as one one cause. Um, I would say there's multiple factors to it. Um, you know, the the new Pacific Health Strategy has acknowledged that, and that's that health strategy is born out of multiple consultations with the Pacific community across our territory, and they're saying the same thing. It is not just because of poor housing, but it's because of poor education. Mm. Culture has a, a role to play with it. Um, you know church culture as well uh, and um, so there's there's multiple um, things that that that, uh, that affect our health and and you know we we look at the te whare uh, tapawha model and the Maoris um, have that model of healthcare we look mm -hmm. at our whale uh, model of healthcare for Pacifica and that again those are the different pillars that we have to look at there's multiple pillars that lift up the health and well-being mm -hmm. I'm here as a politician um, because of um, seeing the issues that affect our health and well-being of our people. I, I, I sat in our clinics in South Auckland, giving medicines, you know, prescribing management plans and so forth, but then they go home to a, a, a poor, damp, wet home that's mm. causing their respiratory issues, it's causing skin conditions to our tamariki, um, you know, and then the education system that needs to be improved. Yes, there needs to be funding, better funding within um, our, our education system for our Pacifica. But um, all these, all these different causes um, can can cause those things. Mm. Culture. I always speak to when I go and do talks at community or, or church as well. I, I think this culture does play a role um, in terms of our Pacifica food culture. Mm. Uh, we love to to have a talanoa around food. Um, but what type of food are we providing? Um, you know, you go, my mum and dad are retired ministers, so I always say that to <laughs> them, mum, dad, you know, it would be cool if the church just changes up the, what they're providing um, uh, on the table for for, for the, the church members. But um, it's pretty hard. They've said it themselves, it's pretty hard when, you know, um, affordability becomes an issue. It's easier to just go buy um, takeaways um, mm. because there's time priorities as well on people. So they didn't want to force it on their church members. They, you know, they're, they're quite healthy. My mom and dad are quite healthy. Mm. Uh, but uh, again, it's because I'm always on their, on, you know, on them about uh, their health as well. But mm. so, like I said, multiple facets to yeah. the health and well-being of our people. So it's our overall well-being mm. that we need. That's awesome. You mm. dodged the question, but um, <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, oh, you know, you know what, for us, Pacif Pacifica, <laughs> what, I, what I've noticed, because I've done you know, a lot of um, community programs, we love to train. We yeah. love our, you know, we go to exercise. It, that, that's easy. Go for walks, go lift some weights and so forth. That's easy for us. Mm. You know, we, we love our sports as well. Yeah. When it comes to nutrition, that's the biggest challenge. Mm. And nutrition plus culture plus everything else can can be a recipe of disaster for our health and well-being. So, mm. uh, 
You think it's because we need more education around food, or I think we've we've, we've kind of over educated. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we'll always say education is one part. No, that's um, really good to know because everyone's always pushing education, education. But it's yeah, like yeah. having you sit here saying, "Now we know." Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's really good. Honestly, you know, I've had patients come in, and then you know, I've, I've you know, there's. You can always, you try to you talk about nutrition quite a bit, but um, people, I find my patients, are, they already know about nutrition. Um, mm. with the nurses give them a lot of um, information. Maybe it's information overload, possibly, but um, because that's just focusing on one part of it, education, yes, that's important. Yeah, put it into our languages, yes, that's important. But it's all this other stuff that we need to be um, um, improving and in, in, directing mm -hmm. our resources into um but uh we're religious people yes yep. um you know and that's where i i feel like the churches do have a, a, a main role in, in providing that sort of information or um one of the success things successful programs that we've seen is that churches who are led by the ministers mm. who have done um, prog health programs has filtered down to the church members and that's improved their health but the other thing is how do we maintain that? Yeah. You know, past the 12 week challenge. How <laughs> past yeah, the, true. those sort of things. So that's 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 a challenge for us. That's a good way to put it. I didn't even finish 12 week challenges. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. I just donate to them, but I don't really finish them. It's but an investment. Yeah. We'll get we'll get there. Um uh, can we get into policy? Mm. Um, I'm not sure if you've looked into nationals health policy, but comparing labor and nationals health policies, mm. Mm. what are we? What do you think we'll see if mm. we, if national come into government in mm. the health mm. um, sector? Well, you know, I can know, uh, number one, I can always look at their track record, and you know, nine years in government, they had underinvestment. There was pressure. Yes, there was pressure on on the system in terms of waiting lists as well. Mm. Um, uh, our people, um, you know, there wasn't uh, as much uh, programs that were getting funded for Pacific providers under their nine years. Mm. So again, I can just look back at their, their, their nine years of, of uh, track record. They'd had two years that didn't fund any um, uh, building upgrades and so forth. So we saw like the likes of Middlemore with yes. crap going through their walls. Mm. Well, that was two years of underfunding. No funding at all, uh, to, to, to be frank. Mm. Um, so th those sort of things you say, oh, man, I, you know, I, I hope, you know, I haven't seen their full manifesto in terms of their health come out. Mm. But when you combine National and then the ACT Party, we know what ACT Party is <laughs> wanting want to do, you know, their coalition. Yeah. Then, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I get very anxious about their policies because ACT is already saying cut the Ministry of Pacific exactly. Peoples. Mm. You know, we are, you know, as a Labour government, we've, we've provided over $700 million into the Ministry of Pacific Peoples to direct the different priorities within them, mm. um, health being one of them. Um, we've seen, you know, them say, oh, we'll, we'll repeal or uh, look at getting removal of the Māori Health Authority, mm. uh, Takafai Order. Again, the, the, you know, when you do that, that has, we as Pacifica think, oh, Oh no! What, what else they're going to do in terms of Pacific um, health as well? Because that's one of the the, the things of the new health uh, reforms is to make sure that we're prioritising Maori health, but also Pacifica health as well. That's mm. what it's been legislated for. So yeah, I'm I'm, I'm a bit anxious when when they come in. Um, you know, yeah. I've already said my bit in terms of labour. Um, they are they are funding since 2017, mm. but the track record of national hasn't been too great in terms of health, and and that all comes down to revenue. Mm. You know, they're already saying that they want to cut this cut that um, bring the spending down of government spending but then you know we've already everyone's been talking okay you've got a two billion dollar hole in your um yes your, your yeah. fiscal plan mm. um so where where they're going to bring that out so they've they recently announced their their other plan is to um cut down here cut down there and then started to say they're going to bring two billion dollars out of the msd system mm. and then started bashing beneficiaries on that as well so mm. So it's 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 kind of like an undercover way to fill up their two billion dollar hole, um, but uh, again, when it comes to health, uh, yeah, I'm 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 just too scared to see what that. Would yeah, be. yeah, yeah. And um, you know, with the rise, I think this is the first time they've had the most Pacific MPs represent mm. um, in the National Party. Mm. Uh, for me, representation is very important. Yes, it and is. Yeah. Um, like I had said earlier, consulting the right people. Mm. Do you think your confidence? Um, you know, within party politics, yeah, there's always yeah. things that go on that people don't see. Do you think mm. having four representatives there would be enough to push for Pacific people's needs? Or yeah. do you think they're still going to have that internal 
fighting yeah, they, that's they, going on in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like first and foremost, yeah, I believe representation is key as well mm. across all the political um, parties because you know we all have diverse views within our Pacifica f- uh, families as well. So to see Agnes get, I think number twenty-five, mm. boom, you know, we're happy. Like, good on you, Agnes. But you know, we would love to see like um, to have enough numbers get into. Um, if, if it was the case, like for us, we've got eleven Pacifica yes. MPs. Mm. That is a strong Pacific caucus to work Push within mm. uh, within the Labour Party to come out with policies that support us. Having four there, you know, it's it's. You know, numbers is a key game in politics, and if you don't have the numbers, you're not going to push priorities. So mm. I think that's going to be an issue for the National Pacifica Caucus. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, so um, thank you for sharing that with us. Mm. If you come into government again, mm. what are you going to be prioritising for the Takanini electorate? Oh, mate, so Takanini, you know, because this has been a new electorate, we've had to establish a lot of things. And um, what I've been so proud of is that, uh, number one, we've established a youth council because we have to get the voices of our youth. Um, you know, they can't vote just yet, um, but, um, you know, really prioritise our youth because we have a young population in Takanani. Number two it was being accessible to our community. We've got, yes, I've got my main office in Takanani, but my electric goes all the way up to Mission Heights, Flatbush, Ormiston. Mm. So I bought a Christopher Luxon mm. and I bought a Judith Collins. So yeah. I've got the old leader, <laughs> I've got the new leader. <laughs> So, so you know, I'm sandwiched between you know, the, the, the the blue corridor, <laughs> the blue corridor. So, um, so yeah. So I, again, like being a diverse um, community, I got to make sure that I'm reaching out to the different um, places there. So I do hold um, outreach clinic or outreach corridor hui's up in Ormiston. I have it in the middle with Randwick Park. I come down to Takanini Library. So having been accessible um, to our community has been key as well. About 50-60% of our issues that come through our door is immigration. So it's really prioritizing what are the mm. immigration settings for our people. Because again, we have a 42% Asian population, we've got mm. you know, a lot of migrant communities there. Um, so immigration is key for us. We want to make sure that uh, we lobby within party politics and policy as well to make sure that our policies are strong for our immigration, our, our migrant communities. Uh, number two has been housing, NSD, ACC, those sort of issues that come through. Uh, and number three has been local issues. Mm. People people are still trying to find like, oh, am I part of Takanini uh, electorate? Am I part of this electorate? Or what, what is a central government issue? What mm. is a local issue? So they come to me with all sorts of um, concerns regarding Auckland Council or this and that, uh, rubbish collection and so forth. So there, you know, in terms of the different issues that come through our office, it's been good for us to manage because we don't just flick them off and go, oh, go, go over here and go there. Mm. My team have been really great in terms of walking through with them the journey of trying to resolve their, their concerns. So mm. um, I would say the number one thing would be immigration, first and foremost, for our people to make sure that policy settings are right. And uh, that's why I'm so glad that parents yep. and grandparents category has, has come out. Uh, because that's that's what the Sikh temple is saying, our Sikh community, our Indian community have been saying, like, because you know, they've got young families, they need to go to work, you know. Right, right. So, you know, it'd be good to have mum and dad or our grandparents there to look after them. Um, but not only that, because of the young kids, um, I, I'm so glad that Labour has put in that uh, extending the ECE mm. to two year olds because, again, mum and dad can have time to go back to work as well. So, mm. um, Let's talk about amnesty as well. You know, um, we're the only party that has come out with amnesty. Um, I know, I know, Green Party are um, you know saying that they want to do the same as well. National hasn't. They've already set their their visa for parents and grandparents. But amnesty has been one the core from our Pacific communities as well. You know, um, so it's mm-hmm. been great to have to see that ten years plus. If you've been in, uh, an overstay for ten years plus, that there's a a way that you can be, um, you know, uh, mm. regularized or. I hate that we're regularized, but you can be uh, a legal, uh, yeah. uh, you know, uh, have legal status within New Zealand. So. I'm really glad that you are prioritizing uh, immigration. Mm. We've seen the exploitation not only in the Pacific, yeah. co- across communities, to be honest. Yes. And um, I'm really glad that's one of the things that you're going to be pushing forward, um, mm. especially reflecting on your electorate. Mm. But um, thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, I just wanted you to share with everyone mm. why they should vote for Labour. And you could say down the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Tell off our folks. <laughs> I think it's really important because what it what is at stake is a lot of things. Um, you know, we rely on our health service hugely. 
you know, that's one of the things that uh, we'll see that repealed uh, and underfunded within, you know, the next government, uh, seeing that National and Act uh, could be a coalition. Um, so really important, not only that, for our Pacifica families that across the board, Ministry of Pacific Peoples, Act has already said that they'll remove that. So having the priorities, having those uh, sort of things at the cabinet table for our ministers to look at, well, we need to prioritise our Pacifica families because, uh, you know, again, when it comes to our health status and across the board in terms of home ownership, we are progressing well. We need to keep going. But if we don't get into government, those are the things that got to get left behind. So two ticks labour, tick for me as well, for Takanini if you live there. Um, it's so important uh, that we get the next Labour government in for the next term. Thank you so much, Dr. Anai, for coming onto our show. We really appreciate it. We wish you all the best with the rest of your campaign. Right. Thank you. And um, we will see you again after Election Day. <laughs> I'll bring you on for another sleeper. interview. <laughs> cool. We'll bring you on for another interview for <laughs> no sure, worries. just to see how everything goes. But have cool. a great week. And like once again, we wish you all the best. And um, good morning. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.